Welcome back to another episode of Gardening with Ryan. You already know who I am. We're gonna start. They say make a wish. Sounds pagan. So. I wish that people would stop wishing with these. <laughs> Let's take a look. Last time we watered pretty heavily and we were like, stuff is going to grow. Look at how there's just like consistent green. And remember how in an earlier episode, you might remember these succulent looking things, how I really like those and wanted more of those to grow. Our clump here is doing quite well, and if you've been watching for a while, we just dug some crabgrass out, just pulled a whole chunk and threw it. Oh, look at that, that's new. That one's still full of water. But... Remember how I was mainly trying to get more grass sprouts? Well, look at that. Look at this new grass. Look at all this. Ooh. Homie's... Not doing too. Oh, I think I hear bees. That's fan. Oh, look. Yeah, there's bees on there. That means they're pollinating it, which means more flowers on that thing and more plants. Look at that. That's cool. And look at that grass growth. Homie's not doing the best. I think I'm gonna chill on the water with that one a little bit. Seems clear that this tree sprout, I mean, everything looks like it's doing well, but back here is doing quite well. We watered just a couple days ago, and you can see it's still pretty wet, but with new grass, you gotta water it every day. So. We're gonna do some watering. And I haven't decided on today's topic yet. Oh look, a lizard. Oh, I know what rant I'll go on. So... This is meant to be... Alright. I was gonna add a disclaimer, so... I'm like, oh wait, I don't know if this is allowed on YouTube. Then I'm like, I don't care, man. They can pull it down if they want. Because, you know, it, it, it's a conspiracy theory rant. But... I'm admitting that it's a pretty out there conspiracy theory. It's just a fun one. Anyway. I was having a conversation with my sister. And I'll just give you the gist of it. By asking you the questions that we asked each other. If you went to the moon with film equipment, would you take a lot of video? Like a lot. 
and like make movies and take all the selfies. My next question. How much video footage have you seen of the moon landing from when they were there? Like with the quality of film that you know is producible of the time, how, how much have you seen in your life? All right, let's get a little bit wackier. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. Atoms. How many atoms have you ever seen? Other than, other than a science teacher and people saying, of course they exist, what, why do you believe atoms exist? Other than that there's a general societal pressure to. Have you ever personally witnessed anything that would not tell you that the earth is a giant flat thing on pillars and we're in a giant dome if you had never seen pictures of a globe in a science book so you can really stretch this as far as you want but the point I want to make... Oh, and look how well those are doing. The point I want to make is about levels of knowledge. Now, okay, let me be very clear. I'm, I'm inclined to believe that we landed on the moon. I believe atoms exist. I do not think that we are under a dome. However, I personally have never looked at an atom under an electron microscope or whatever. I've j I just believe they exist because pretty much all the people with degrees have told me so and I have, they, I have not been given sufficient reason or cause to doubt. But People have been lied to in mass before, so it's possible here. However, I am 100% sure that I'm watering this garden right now. And that that tree is going, growing out of the ground. Now you can say your senses can delude you, so can you ever be certain of anything? That's a different philosophical discussion. Here I'm just pointing out that you can say that you are sure of something without necessarily, I don't know. Okay, you can be sure of something without it being necessarily your pet issue. And just because you can't give a very thorough, systematic explanation of everything you're sure of, because a theme I focus on a lot is for people to just shut up if they don't know what they're talking about. And I stand by that. But the other opposite extreme is like, okay, unless you have like a bunch of degrees, buddy, don't even bother opening your mouth. And I think that's just as bad. Like, a bunch of like gatekeeping. I'm just asking people to do the research that is publicly available to anybody, but people that... So, where I'm going with this is essentially that I think you should just... N uh, not grant people the benefit of the doubt by default when people tell you that something is a certain way. Now, I just decided what the main topic of this episode is going to be. 
And this is going to be very controversial. And if you disagree with me, that's okay. That's 100% okay. But I'm going to ask you a series of questions. And I want you to take away whatever conclusion... Well, I'm not here to tell you what conclusion to make. That's not why I'm making this episode. Because, but I think it'll speak for itself. Is it true that we have lots of private prisons? Meaning, prisons that are not... Well, well privately owned. It, it, it's a, I don't really need to define that. Um... But for you Europeans and such, we have prisons that are run by corporations rather than the government. And essentially, um, well, okay, the next question I would ask, is it or is it not true that you are required to work usually for these corporations, usually for cents an hour and at such a low rate that ramen becomes currency in the prison? Yes or no? Okay. Yes. So I would contend... And I'll tell you where I stand. I would contend... That... It's objectively true that there are private prisons. And... It's not a debate that... They're laboring for cheap. So my contention is... How is that not slavery? If the government... is selling off people to corporations or corporations are, ta are buying them off the government's hands or whatever. I, I don't know how that whole exchange works, but it it's irrelevant to the point. And they are then forced to be put in a cage. Once they get out, you pretty much can't function because... It's a you have a permanent mark that you're required to list everywhere that you've been in there and no one will hire you. Tell me how this isn't slavery. Now, next question. Is there a disproportionate amount of black incarceration? Are there too many black people in prison that shouldn't be? Is there a huge amount of black people in prison that shouldn't be? I answer yes. I... I... I I'm not really here to debate or go on a rant about why. And... My question is solely this. Can someone explain to me how this does not mean that we still have black slavery in the U.S.? Where... Because I looked up some numbers, and there are more black people in prison, black men in prison even, I think, then there were slaves imported. Because there were like 600,000 slaves imported, and there's like 600 and more than 600,000 black prisoners in the United States. And, well, regardless of what it is, it tops the number of slaves, and they're forced to work for corporations put in cages, and labored for the benefit of non-government corporations. And if you grant that they are disproportionately imprisoned, and that such an arrangement is slavery, 
have I or have I not just proven that black slavery still exists in the United States? I'll let you take away your own conclusion from that. But I feel like the answer is in the question. Right? So, that being said, I have to add a big qualifier, it's not even a qualifier, I should just add as well that I think most of the prison system is BS, most of the people that are in there shouldn't be in there, and the ones, the, the, the very few that I think actually should be restrained in a cage like this person is so dangerous to society that we, should, we can't punish them by fines or anything, we literally have to lock them in a cage, those are people that that should be put to death, but that's very few, and only people that do the most heinous of crimes. But I think only those people actually need to get restrained in a cage to, for society to stay safe. Who else are you worried about? Like, who else are you worried about being on the streets? So, to just tell you exactly what my take on it is, uh, it just seems to me like black slavery just straight up still exists in the U.S. because the prison system is basically slavery. Once you're in, you can't get out because once you're out, no one, nowhere will hire you and you, you can look up reincarceration statistics yourself if you want. And... Well, if this is debated, I want you to, on your own, just with Google, right? Search something. Pick any crime, any given crime. And then, because if you, uh, because, because people keep arguing, like, I, I hear arguments like, oh, well, what if it's, what if it's just because they're committing more crimes and stuff? And I'm like, okay, you know how we can just, just put, put, put this to rest, like, really easily? Pick any crime that people can commit. And then, go research on your own if you are more likely to get away with said crime as a white man or a black man. Like, with said crime. That way, numbers are left out and that whole game doesn't get played and we can just cut right to it. And in that one, I think, again, the answer is in the question. But, yeah, if you, you can see all the new green popping up in there and all that. Because just needed some water. I mean, this dirt is just ready to grow all sorts of goodness. Like, look at that pop up of that plant. That's pretty cool. And let's just put those below.
And we've brought this pot largely back to life. And those leaves look so much greener. Let's see if we can... Yeah, look how much greener those leaves look now on that. And this one was just dead. Look how... And that's a pretty healthy plant now. It's starting to look a lot more similar to that one. See, look, it took that long for this thing to fill up with water. That's how thirsty that plant is. So yeah, I know it's been kind of a varied episode from do we live under a dome to modern slavery, but uh, the show's always just me ranting about whatever, so. Like, is anyone surprised? But, we're just about done. We're just gonna give this grass some more water. Because, Like, that grew so much in just a couple days that... A lot of people tell me they just really enjoy watching these, which I appreciate. I appreciate all you viewers. I think this is the ninth episode now? Wow. It might be, yeah. Ain't that something. Well, I think that's pretty well watered for today. And I realized that I was mainly thinking instead of talking out loud for a second there. But, uh, yeah, um, my main question for the viewers, and leave a comment if you'd like to, if you disagree, please explain to me. And this is an earnest question. Because if you can explain to me how it's not, go for it. Please explain to me how this is not modernized racial slavery.
and if there's a real explanation, that, that then you win. It's done. Like, I'm not asking sarcastically, even. Well, I kind of am, because I don't think there is an explanation, but if there is one, then... I don't know. I'm. If you're wondering where I am politically or like, wait, this guy does theology interviews. Is he some liberal or something? I, I, I have no idea, man. I, I, I no. But I'm also not a conservative. I, I, I don't. I fundamentally disagree with the political platform of every major party in the United States and like the economics behind the platforms and I don't endorse any platform or political candidate so um Properly speaking, in political theory, I think I'd be a centrist, but I don't fit anywhere on the uh, U.S.'s left-right scale because it requires accepting a whole economic system and stuff that I can't get behind or really understand. Maybe I could if I understood it more, but it's not. And here's the thing, most of the topics that I'm talking about right now, I talked about levels of knowledge. This is something that, that I have a very low level of knowledge about. It's not a passion topic of mine. It's just something I'm inclined to think, and this is a video of me thinking out loud. So, I'm not here saying that I'm infallible on it. You, you noticed when I cited sources, I didn't cite exact numbers or anything, and it's just, you can have convictions, but you should have a reason for them. And I stated my reasons. I'm not saying you have to be a genius, but I'm just saying that lacking reason for conviction is the problem that I've been pointing out. Anyway, I think we've sufficiently watered this grass and plants and such. Everything looks good and healthy. And it's a nice sunny day out. And if you've been inside and you don't remember the last time you've been outside, well, you're a lot like me, but you should probably go outside. Are you going to take that advice? Probably not, but like, you'll benefit from it. Unused pot. Remember that? We still got plans. Anyway. Thank you all for joining me on yet another. Oh, I'm up so early today. I usually wake up around like 3 4 p.m., so. This is, I rolled out of bed and laid there for a few hours and then made this video. Anyway. Is that a wasp's nest? I think it is. Look. That 
that looks like wasp nest material. That's so cool. Is that a, is that a bunch of wasp nest girl? No way. There's someone walking around back there. Let's see if we can get a video of it. Okay. I want to see if there's wasps in there, but... I don't want to, like, screw up their home by moving the hose. Let's move it around back there. I see a wasp just climb out of there. Could be old and abandoned. Who knows? Well, if you got offended, make sure to leave a like. If you didn't get offended, Make sure to leave a like. If you disagreed, make sure to leave a like. If you agreed, make sure to subscribe. And, to, well, that was interesting. Oh, I don't know what that was. Um, to everyone who watches these, You're awesome. And, oh look, a lizard climbing up that tree. Uh, went around the other side. But anyway, I'm just gonna... So, everyone on YouTube says, smash that like button, subscribe, hit that bell. But the reason they do that is because it actually helps, and if you ever enjoy YouTube content, you should leave a like, just in general. I'm not, you don't have to for me, I would appreciate it, but like, for others, I think you should, just like, because you, I mean, that's how YouTube decides how well they're doing as a content creator. Well, okay, the, the, the most valuable thing you can give a content creator is actually watch time time spent watching the video that's the most important thing that gets ranked in youtube um how much time after someone clicks on this person's videos do they usually spend do they click away right away or do they spend a while and well the second most important thing subscriptions it's basically a currency so when you, so you subscribe, it's like a permanent payment. And then likes. Likes also help tremendously. Likes help boost the video, and um, you'll notice views versus likes. Likes don't even come close to views, usually. Because most people don't do it, but the people... But YouTube treats it as if someone is going to go out of their way to sign in or whatever, or actually click the like button, they must have really liked the video. So, those are the three most important things. If you want to succeed on YouTube or help other YouTubers. Number one, watch time. Number two, subscribers. Number three, likes. Oh, and one other thing you can do to help content creators you like is if you ever see their YouTube recommend their stuff to you and you click it, it will boost them tremendously. Or another way to boost their results or boost your results if you want to like have people help you out is tell people to uh 
I'm losing my train of thought. Oh, to search your channel name. And if it's hard to find, just like sort by upload date or something or add the video or tell them to search your channel name in the video title. But more people searching the channel name and getting there that way. Uh, okay, I might be making it too complicated. I'm mainly talking to people who make YouTube videos now. But if you want to support people, simply just watch the videos, like, subscribe. And if you see it, if you see one recommended to you, clicking it when you see it flash to you helps tremendously as well. But, like... I sound like I'm really just trying to get views here, but I'm I'm not. I just think that people get annoyed with, like, atrocious ads all over the internet and such. But the reason that stuff is so ad-filled and disgusting is because people don't show that they're interacting as much like if more people liked videos there would be less need for ads in general on the internet so I'm not talking about my channel here although I would appreciate it but th that's not the point if you like videos that you actually like there's less incentive for the internet for them to show you what they think you like And less, less incentive to try to spy on you to uh, track what kind of stuff you like because you're liking it. Anyway, if you disagree with anything I said, that's fine. Like usual. And... I'm gonna go get some food. Catch you all in the next one. Or, uh, go check out my other interviews. Uh, I said interviews. Um, I have two interviews uploaded on here. I have... Go check out the channel. The, there's something for everybody. There's... There, there's, we got everything from movie streams to, oh, yeah, uh, the Discord server that you'll see linked in most of the videos. We hang out and watch horror movies. I probably will be too lazy to link it in this video, but it's linked in most of them, so. You'll find it if you really want to get there. <laughs> Alright. And my closing advice for today, I've given this one a few times, is... Today, when you see this, if the sun is out when you see this, go outside for any period of time. Ten seconds is fine. Did you do it? Wasn't so bad, was it? If you add 10 seconds a day, it won't take long to get to hours. Weird to think about, isn't it? Well, okay, it'll take a while, but like, you know what I mean. Peace.